Jonathan, was Mom, I'm fine, is it just a message to your mother, or what it, was it like a planned project? And I've always been wondering what's up with the dad. <laughs> Where is the dad? Well, <laughs> he's not here tonight. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> I, mean, I hope not. So, um, basically, no, it was a planned project. This is um, a bit special. So, my passion was to travel. And the problem with traveling is not only what it costs, it's the fact that you're not making money when you're traveling. I mean, normally, this is what I thought like years ago. And then uh, I found out about a guy called Where the Hell is Matt? I don't know if a lot of guy, people know him, but I, I was looking at his videos and I was really a fan. And I thought, wow, this guy was able to do videos and find sponsors. And I was like, he was traveling with his girlfriend, getting paid for that, and it was in 2008 or something. So there was not even Instagram. And I said, okay, if I can have an idea and do this, why not me? And I have a Mexican mom. I don't know if someone has a Mexican mom here, but that promise is, <laughs> is quite special. And so as she was worried because I sold my car, I sold my company, I decided to travel. I said, okay, I told this to my mom, she was worried, so I decided, okay, this is the thing. I'm not speaking in English to, to her, I'm speaking in Spanish. And uh, I said, okay, this is what I want to do. Uh, well, it's simple, mom, I'm fine. Everywhere that I'm traveling, jumping out of a plane, etc. And in the worst case, my mom's gonna be happy, my friends are gonna laugh, and in the best case, I'm gonna have a sponsor and be able to travel more. So but you went better than that. <laughs> and concerning my father, it's just that mom and dad, I'm fine, is way longer. <laughs> And my father is Belgian, so he's like, okay, just travel, you know, it's fine. It's just a Belgian so it's, ass, it's, kind it's, of attitude, you know. Yeah, so my, my dad knows I'm fine, so he doesn't need that. So is the rest of the world. <laughs> Thanks, God. So, Jonathan, you're giving a conference called Why Marketers Are Wrong About Influencer Marketing. Yes. Uh, can you tell us what are you trying, what, what's the point you're trying to make here? Yes, well, I know that there are a lot of brands here present, and, um, and this is why I came. It's because I don't have a lot of time, plus they have to speak too. So yeah. I, I believe that there is like a problem in our society at the moment, like marketing-wise, concerning influencer marketing and what people do usually. Uh, it's not what I think, it's actually figures. So I can give you some examples of things that I noted that, that happened to me through my story that I can tell that are things that are no, not working. So the first thing is that um, I call it the senior problem. Usually the ones that are in charge of taking marketing decisions in big companies are people that are not millennials. They don't know anything about cell phones and usually I can name some, I don't know if I can name that, but a bottle, red, well, I think you know. And they, they, they come to you and they say, oh, by the way, can you just come in next and put your sign next to uh, like a truck and say, hey, this is like thing. No, this is the big difference that we give your message with our words, and this is why it's authentic, it's people can relate, and we are recommending this, but if we just do this like traditional meal, like television, radio, etc., it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Plus, they don't pay attention to the fact that in 2025, 75% of the population will be millennials, and they don't know how to deal with this. So, uh, I'm giving a conference explaining this, and I really believe that it's, it's, it's a problem because we, we, we don't know how to communicate together, and I think that should listen a little bit more. Awesome. So my next question is, what's the future for the Moms I'm Fine and the social media in general? How do you see this and like in five, six years? What's going to happen? What would be the next chapter? Well, I've never expected to have something. I mean, what happened to me is like really unreal. I, it went way further than what I, I could imagine. I'm already blessed and grateful what happened. If it stops now, I'm really super happy. I had a name on a plane. I met Cristiano Ronaldo on campaigns. I, I, I had the craziest thing that happened. I, I traveled like really a lot now. It has been three years. But now um, I think that we have a responsibility. At the beginning, I just wanted to have a sponsor. And now there are like hundreds of thousands of people following me. And I know I'm going to use this message as like, I know there are a lot of influencers here and I want to give this message is that everyone here of you has got a responsibility. I'm talking to the influencers. There are millions of people here. We saw that there are 240 millions that of reach in this room. And the thing is that I think that the market is a little bit going down because we see a lot of apps and bikinis. Don't get me wrong, I, I like bikinis, but <laughs> I do, I do. It's a different message. Uh, yeah, but, it a but the thing is this is that in the end, um, what we're talking about is authenticity and doing things for others. And now I'm creating a foundation because mm -hmm. I think that I've got the responsibility. I want to give a positive message. I want to have an, 
like impact, like every, every million it does it, but I really want it. Uh, what I want to do, I want to create a school made out of plastic in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And um, the idea is that you don't have to do crazy projects like this. You just have a voice and people are listening to you. Mm -hmm. How will people remind you? How will, uh, how will, what people will think about you? Like, is it just about plates or making fun? And I like plates and having fun, not saying the opposite. But I think that, I hope, I really hope that people will do a little bit more and be thinking about others. Awesome. So that's pretty much your way of contributing to society, which is amazing. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, and sorry, there is a last part. It's like you were talking about where is going uh, social media because yeah. it was like, I've got the clothing line and the project, the foundation and everything. This is actually a general question to all of you, like what's going to happen next? Cause that's uh, kind of and to me, social media, <laughs> um, I'm, I, it's really difficult to predict where it's going. I think that definitely it's going to be videos. Mm -hmm. I read that 80% of the communication in 2020 will be video, so I, I bet it's going to be videos, and it's, we see the way it's improving, that it's more and more videos, we read a little bit less. But, Is it uh, going to be like a different source, like something new, I, 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 compared I know, to what we have now, like if, if you pinch, attention is moving so fast, because now in Europe there is Article 13 mm -hmm. that might destroy YouTube for Europeans. Um, there is like, every time it's like changing uh, of, 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 uh, of a base, but in the end it's videos. Like because stories, like if you look at stories, if you look at short videos, one minute, like uh, 15 seconds, six seconds for Vine, like there were like a bit of everything. So, but to me it's definitely going to be videos and hopefully um, more authentic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I was just going to say, like, if you do notice, like, there is also, like, boomerangs. Like, even the form of photos at the moment are, in a way, video, because even though a boomerang is still classified more mm -hmm. of a photo, the motion aspect of it, I mean, it's just, like, I'm more eye-grabbing the way that visuals are when they're moving versus when they're, like, a static shot. Even, like, Facebook, like, the way that they, like, make those little montages of, like, reminders of, like, you've been friends with this person for, like, a week or, like, a year or however yeah. long. It's always, like, photos that have been turned into a little video montage. So the video montage aspect is just so much more attractive. Mm. No, I totally agree with you guys. I don't think we're going to know what platforms are going to be new yeah. in, like, four or five years. I don't think we'll ever be able to... Yeah, even in a year. I don't <laughs> think we'll be able to know that unless we're actually inventing our own platforms, yeah. which would be awesome. Um, but video, 100%. I think it's, like, the one thing that really makes you grow. So if my advice to anyone who's not doing videos at the moment is you've got to get yeah. into videos. It ha has huge potential to um, get millions of views, whereas photos don't really have the potential to go viral, mm -hmm. but a, a video does. Do you so. guys also ever go live on Instagram? Yeah. Yeah. So that's another tool like that is really effective and a lot of people are using it now. I know some people are using it and mm -hmm. they're doing awesome at it and, and they're really using it to their advantage. Like for example, they'll go live and they'll say, okay, uh, I'm, I'm going to go live with uh, one of my fans right now. All you need to do is go and like my last post yeah. and then whoever likes it and comments at first will come live with me. So they're actually feeding mm -hmm. those live views into their recent post, mm -hmm. which is using it really, really effectively. I haven't yet done that. I think live is awesome, but it's just another thing to do. Yeah, it's you like know? every little thing is like a different <laughs> yeah. one. The thing with live is that you can actually montage anything, so you just, the way you are, and yeah. I think that what attracts people at this point it just totally depends where your focus is in, on, right? Because if you're doing Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and then you have to concentrate on lives on top yeah. of that, it's just juggling what's more important, I think. Yeah. Makes sense. So what's so unique about your content, Alex? Mine? Yeah. You know, <laughs> We're going to skip you guys. <laughs> Rockstar Blonde. Um, I'm just, I, I create car entertainment. So um, I just want to make cars relatable, real, and fun. Because 99% um, of us are not car experts. But, right? But no. we all kind of have a relationship to cars. Most of us would still drive a car. If yeah. we don't own them, we would still get behind the wheel of one mm -hmm. at some point. And so what we find on cars at the moment is pretty much all written by experts, which can make it a little bit confusing for people. Um, they don't understand the language, they feel intimidated by it. So I'm just trying to make cars really relatable and cool and fun. Yeah. 
do you think content is everything, you know, to grow, grow the audience and become an influencer? Is it, I know it's essential, but still it's, it's not everything, right? No, it's everything. What else? <laughs> <laughs> what, what else? It's everything. No, content is king. Content is everything. Um, uh -huh. Except if you're already well known for something else. So say if you're like Leonardo DiCaprio and you're an actor, you're going to grow naturally on Instagram and social media because people will follow you because they already know you. But if no one knows you from being an actor or a singer or something like that, you have to be creating interesting content to grow. Mm -hmm. um, because every one of us is on social media, so how do you push through the crowd? How do you do it? You need to create different, entertaining, interesting content, otherwise you'll, no one will ever see you. So um, I think what's really important as well is to focus on being visual and, and uh, for example, like when you're scrolling through Instagram or Facebook, how often do you scroll through and you're, you've not got the sound on? You're just looking. That is super, super important for content creators to be uh, making videos where people can understand it without even listening. So it's got to be super visual, and if there is like some, if you're saying something, you should subtitle it or have some kind of words on the screen so that people can understand mm -hmm. what's going on. So I think that's that's super important. Mm -hmm. um, like, uh, just one more thing: if every influencer and content creator in this room gave you a shout out, it still wouldn't help you grow unless you've got content that people want to see. So they would come to your profile, but if you're not offering anything different, they're not going to click follow. Makes sense. Yeah. And the product is good, it speaks for itself, yeah. just like in any other industry. So, uh, Alex, is this being seconds. the only woman? <laughs> One got in 10 th seconds, quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we are very time limited. Okay. Is this because you're also the on one and only woman in the brutal and very menish industry uh, who creates. Is that what makes my content, content different? Yes, so being a woman? Me, yes. I think at the beginning it didn't, um, uh -huh. because there are a lot of women actually on social media in the car. No, no not in social media, oh, what but do you in mean? the car industry, like, you know, related with cars. No, there are lots it's of women in, in cars. Dominated by men? I, it's dominated by men, it is, yes. absolutely. But there are uh, more and more that I've been doing this, the more I've found women, like, kind of coming out of the woodworks, going, oh my god, I love cars too, I didn't really know it was normal. So that was really, really nice to see, that women come up to me and they're like, I feel normal now, you know, that I can love cars or I can be in a male-dominated industry which is awesome. Um, but w w that didn't really make me unique at the beginning because a lot of women are on social media talking about mm -hmm. cars. What made me different was the content, doing content differently from everyone else. And now that I can generate millions of views, I'm the only woman in the car world who can do that now. So that's what makes me unique now, but it didn't at the beginning. Do you get what I mean? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, overcomplicating it a bit. Thanks for explaining yeah. this. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Okay, thank you. Gabe? Yeah. Maybe I mean, you've got five seconds. Hello, hello. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Don't keep silent. Like, touch on that. I just want to like let you guys know that like part of that for me is that establishing a brand for yourself is really what I feel like makes you different than other people is that like there are people that do different kinds of content like car videos or that but like what was successful for you is you established yourself and you made yourself so that when people see your videos they they know it's her. Yeah. And they like they know it's my videos. So like making your own little like methods that can be something as small as maybe the way that you wear a hat or the way that you wear like a certain color. Like I have two friends that wear red and blue every video. And so like their comments are dominated on that. And then they started releasing merchandise around that. It's those little things that really help kind of remind someone they add a little bit of a personal factor to it rather than just, oh, this is a content creator I watch. If you're looking at someone that has like something that you kind of remember and it's something about them, then you kind of feel like it's a friend. I mean, like you notice your friend wearing a certain shirt always, you make a comment on those kind of things. So to me, those little things, they don't really talk about it too much on social media. People always talk about like, oh, growth is only just numbers, numbers, numbers. But it's like, no, how do I make myself also different? How do I really allow myself to fit in the space that is so like saturated in certain ways, but also still be able to make my name different? Yeah. So. Yeah, it can be the smallest things. Like I can never dye my hair again. Yeah. <laughs> People Supercar comment. blondie, that's it. Like I, you know, and that's kind of what I'm known for. My yeah, blonde that, hair. Yeah, that's a brand. So, you know, yeah. you can, you're, you're not eligible. Like you yeah. can, you're not allowed to change it. No, that's it. Like, that's official. Okay, game. <laughs> I'm not here. Done here. Yeah, this party is officially <laughs> over. <laughs> All right. I hope we have a couple more questions for Gabe. Is this a Please, one more. I'll, one I'll answer more. one more. Okay, we're allowed to ask one more. In your opinion, do you feel that comedy uh, sector is saturated on the social media? So with that, with what I was just saying about how like there are so many different creators within it where, yeah, there is so many different forms of comedy and 
Obviously, there's like comedy that people like go on the line of things that can be offensive, and then there's the ones that are very clean content, which is more me. Like I do very PG content where I try and target to younger audiences. It is one of those things where, yes, there are certain elements that all comedy videos have where you feel like, oh, maybe the saturation of like a joke's gonna have this punchline. But if you think about it, every story has like a beginning, middle, and end. So there's always that intimidation factor where people feel like, oh, my joke isn't gonna be original. People are gonna predict it. But it's not really about the joke itself. It's really your delivery. I've had friends deliver the same joke that I have. And to be honest, they delivered it 10 times better. And it's performed <laughs> 10 times better. And they may not have even had more followers. It was just when a joke's delivered a certain way, it gives off a different feel. And so the joke can be original in its own way, and it can also be inspired by something. That doesn't really mean that you didn't think of it. So there's always a little bit of creativity in like, working collaborations. Like Whenever I collaborate with people, if we come up with a joke together, I'm not going to be like, oh, I did 25% of this, he did 75. We're going to say either we came up with it together, or if you want to be selfish, you can say, it's on my page, it's my joke. <laughs> so you can do it like that, but there's just... There's just this, I guess, intimidation that's built into social media where if a joke's been done before, people really feel like, oh, I cannot post it because someone got to the joke before me. But I mean, look how many people do social media. The chances that your joke is gonna be 100% original is just, it's so I, I wouldn't say saturated as much as just that, just keep doing what you do. And like, for me, I've tried doing jokes consistently and I mean, there are a lot that just fall on their face and I'm like, okay, maybe not that one. But when you get one that works, it kind of really kind of just starts rolling with it and then just you find yourself. So that's really it with that. Thank you.